folks welcome back to another reading today i am using the traditional rider weight smith tarot and i have laid your cards out in a celtic cross formation today i am speaking to a situation that causes a lot of heartbreak within you whatever is going on with these particular circumstances they're holding you back there's a king of cups that struggles to move into the future, to think of things in a fresh new way. This is someone who stays stuck in their emotions. This may be someone who really struggles with depression, but on the other hand, may struggle to treat their depression, may struggle to get down to the root cause of their depression. When I see the king of cups, in um stuck towards the past like he is in this particular case and i flipped him around earlier um he's pointing towards the past his head is pointing towards the past which tell, talks to me about someone who moves into the future kicking and screaming this is someone who is very reluctant to make positive changes who just feels like everything's going to turn out a bad way but at the same time, they affect the image of someone who is, in, who is in control of their emotions, who can teach others to be in control of their emotions. But when things flip out and flip onto their head, this is someone who is not in control. And this is someone who can be also quite manipulative. Take it as it resonates. This can be someone, since we've got the heartbreak card, this can be someone who has manipulated you over a great period of time. This is someone that you're supposed to be able to trust, that you're supposed to look up to. This is someone who's supposed to be a role model. Instead, they have used their emotional grounded energy to manipulate others around them for their own selfish gain. There may be some deeply selfish tendencies bordering on narcissistic, but I want to be cautious about flinging around the term narcissistic because that's a actual decently rare diagnosis. And I want to be specific with my terms, but this is at the very least someone who is a deeply selfish person, but doesn't come across that way towards a lot of friends, towards a lot of family. This is someone who knows how to manipulate their image. This may be someone who struggles with it with depression, but at the same time um, is perfectly capable of manipulating others around them. And they're breaking your heart. I see in the past that quite possibly the universe gave you the opportunity to leave this particular situation, but for whatever reason you chose not to. This is appearing in the past. And um, that doesn't mean that this doesn't hurt any less, but it is. It, it follows. And I see you as someone who may potentially struggle to leave in the future. This King of Cups may manipulate you back into the relationship with them. And this might be not just an emotional struggle, but this might also be, on because we've got swords here, um, this is going to be a struggle to think a different way. You might have been with this person for so long that you only know how to be around this person. You've become so accustomed to them that you can't picture life without them. And that may be where they have so much power over you, pointing towards the past. They don't want to move forward into the past. Therefore, they don't want to see you move forward into the past. In that case, it's the King of Cups becomes a kind of anchor, a dead weight. In the water if you will that um this by the way is in your future this six of swords there's the real risk that in the future you might loop back around to this particular individual because they know exactly what to say what they need to do in order to bring you back in consciously you might be in a position where you have to work with this king of cups whose head is pointing towards the past, who has to live in the past in order to feel some semblance 
of happiness. You might have to work with this particular person in order to have money, in order to have your body, your material circumstances well taken care of. This is in your conscious position. You are consciously aware that you need to work with this person in spite of your heartbreak in order to support yourself and support any children that may be um, that you may share with this person i see you in the unconscious position this is interesting you're not consciously doing this but gradually there's something in the back of your mind that is collecting information on how to be independent on your own terms this is a very slow and gradual process because with the pentacles, the timing is baked in, right? This is slow, gradual progress, but this is consistent progress as well. Your brain isn't necessarily alerting you to the idea that it is collecting information on how to be independent on your own. But at the, at, when it's at the night stage, it suggests to me that you have a decent enough, a decent amount of knowledge that you can get out there and start things, making yourself independent, financially independent on your own. You can do this, but you have to notice this energy first. You have to notice that your brain has been collecting information that will make your life easy and make it so that you are independent enough that you can work alone instead of being forced to be in this position of working with others. There may be some things in this. It might be a family business. It might be you just literally working alongside this King of Cups is giving you the skill set that you need in order to eventually launch off on your own. Take note of what your brain notices and understand that your brain has old lizard brain instincts that are there for a reason and that paying attention to them is going to be of great help to you, okay? In your advice position, you have the Six of Cups. Be careful about looking at the start of this relationship with this King of Cups with rose-colored, rose-tinted glasses. It might be really tempting to look back at the past and think about how good things were in the past and stick around and struggle to leave for that very reason. Things were always so good in the past. They can always go back to being how they were in the past because he can make changes. He, she, they. There is no gender in tarot, and I could be speaking to a wide variety of couples here. But this is to take the good memories as they are, but don't use them to make decisions in the future when things are so clearly dead in the water. Don't forget that the Three of Swords is the central theme for this particular spread. You are heartbroken, and ideally, you should be leaving permanently and not looking back but in the I, I see in the future that you might turn back around and go back to this relationship you might have to leave a couple of times in order to finish breaking up with this particular partner your current environment has the king of wands there's nobody like that that in control here your partner may have control of the dynamic in the relationship, but rest assured they do not deserve that particular throne. Ideally, it should be a relationship that works well together, but more often than not, there is someone who is in charge, who leads. This is someone who does not have the emotional maturity to lead. This is someone who easily boils over, who easily burns people with the things that they do and that, that they say. And they, excuse me, they might try to take things back later on, but it, people still get burned. These people get driven away. This is someone who gets hot, flares hot really, really easily. And if I were reading in the Thoth tarot tradition, 
then these two would point to someone who gets very violent, who can get violently angry very, very quickly. This is water and fire energy and then fire on, and fire on fire energy. This is someone who is not in control of themselves, but expects to be in control of their home environment because they are the head of the household, whatever their gender may be. That's your current environment. I get that you may be walking on eggshells potentially around this particular person. You're not trying to upset them, but at the same time, you're still dealing with your particular broken heart. With the Three of Swords going back to that central theme, this might have been an affair that got uncovered, possibly quite recently. Something got exposed and now um, everything's up in the air. You're just waiting for things to settle down and go back to how they used to, but you're supposed to move out of this particular situation as soon as possible. The universe wanted you to leave before any of this started. The universe is acknowledging that you wanted to stay. You did stay. And there's the risk that you will continue to stay, that it will take more than a few times to actually break up with and leave this person. In your hopes and your fears, you're afraid that you're not going to make it. Now, this is interesting because this is in your subconscious, your unconscious position with the Knight of Pentacles. You're not actively doing work to move out of this particular situation, but your brain is instinctually collecting information. But right now, you are not consciously moving in the direction of growing whatever skill set, whatever business, whatever it takes to make you independently comfortable, not just independently comfortable, but able to take care of others as well. You're not in this particular mindset right now. And in fact, you might even be afraid. You might be seen as too masculine in your particular culture, your particular family, your society may see you as to be being too masculine if you are completely in charge of how you make your own money you might be might lo love to own your own small business for instance <coughs> you might love to become the owner of a particular store for instance take it as it resonates but this is someone who is afraid of the journey even of the path towards becoming someone who is in complete charge of their material comfort and is also able to take care of others. This is someone who is very much in it for the long haul. This is a marathon runner. This is someone who takes care of their body, who takes care of their finances, who takes care of any minors. I've also seen the King of Pentacles described as the marrying king. You might be afraid of commitment to someone who can genuinely take good care of you for whatever reason. You know, you need to, you need to fill in the blank with that one. Why are you afraid of someone who is deeply committed to, to taking care of someone like you? Why do you need to be around people who are chaotic, who inject that kind of bad boy imagery? or bad girl, or fill in the blank, bad envy. It doesn't matter here. Gender doesn't matter here. But what does matter is asking why you prefer chaos over groundedness. What is, in, what is within you that attracts that? And that's where I'm kind of concerned about why this is in your subconscious. There's a good process going on here, but you're not consciously doing the shadow work that is necessary for you to attract someone like this, but also be this for yourself. You don't need a romantic partner always. Sometimes the universe says that, yeah, you do need a romantic partner for this situation. Make no mistake. But you need to be this for yourself, too. Be this. Attract this. Live this particular lifestyle. Don't be afraid of growing into that. Don't. 
And then easier said than done, especially if your society says that you're too much of something if you are someone who is financially independent, who can materially take care of themselves without outside assistance. A lot of people are afraid of that and you might be around people who get deeply jealous get anxious around people who are in control of their finances and don't need others to give them advice because they make good choices. They know how to make good choices because they've done the work, they've done the research. Grow into that. You can do this. It's not something for you to be afraid of. This is a good time for you to do shadow work into your emotions and feelings and thoughts and thought processes around finances, around bringing in money, around spending money, around investing it, around giving it to those who are in need. There's, it's a tool, ultimately, but we've wrapped up so much around finance, wrapped up so much into finances when it comes to emotions, that sometimes we need to sit down and pull those apart in order to see it for the tool that it is. And when, once we see it as a tool, then it's going to be a whole lot easier, I would hope, to do something constructive with it. And guess what? This is in your outcome position. This is the queen of wands. If you can let go of the past and appreciate it for what it was, if you can leave permanently, this would be behavior that I would attribute to someone who is the queen of wands, someone who takes action, but uses their emotions and feelings and their intuition to guide this. This is their sacred intuition, by the way. This would be doing the shadow work, getting in touch with the universe, with the ancestors, with guides, with deities, whoever you may work with. This is you growing into a spiritual aspect of yourself that would grow out of this particular situation entirely so that you don't repeat it ever again. Because that might be one of the risks associated with this card too, is that this isn't the first relationship that this has, this relationship that you're in now has echoed prior relationships before. You've been here before, you've done this before because it feels right. This is where you also need to do shadow work into why you attract the people to you that you do. I respect that this might have been a rough reading and I appreciate you sticking around and listening. I wish you a healing journey, and I hope that you get help in moving out of your particular situation if that is what you need. Thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day.